But first, we want to wish you a good morning and a happy Friday. I'm Anusha Roy. TGIF for everyone. I'm Jordan Chavez. Let's get a check of your long weekend forecast with meteorologist Chris Bianchi. Chris, going to be great weather for anybody who has plans around the water this weekend. Yeah, water plans, mountain plans, whatever you've got outside looks basically A-OK -okay for most of the state. I should say most of the state. A few spots could be talking about a few showers. But for us here in Denver on this Friday morning, this Labor Day or uh, pre-Labor Day uh, Friday morning, uh, temperatures right now actually relatively cool out there. 58 for us in Denver, 49 for us in Greeley, 45 Lyman. So a little bit of almost a pre-fall feel out there this morning. But later on today, we will not have much of a fall feel. Upper 80s for us, our average high for today. 85 degrees, so it'll be a couple degrees above that. Mostly sunny skies, not expecting any sort of meaningful storm chances anywhere here across the metro area until probably the middle part of next week. Highs for today, upper 80s or average, as mentioned, 85. Record is 98, mostly in the 70s in the high country. Radar right now, seeing a few showers out by Walsenburg. Otherwise, we're mostly dry this morning. And an isolated gusty storm in southern Colorado. Maybe one or two of those storms try and sneak their way on up into the far southern reaches of the Palmer Divide, but probably more into Colorado Springs. We stay dry here in town for today and over the next few days as well. Our Labor Day trending dry and warm as well, but I'll get into details on when we can expect that next storm chance and also when things might change a little bit for us. Details on that coming up in a couple minutes. We'll send things over to Brianna for a look at traffic. Chris, thank you so much. 502 is your time for this Friday morning. And so let's talk about that holiday travel. If you're heading out the door right now, taking a live look from our CDOT cameras, it is still very quiet. So if you're getting out of town this morning, it is a perfect time. Get out bright and early because I'm sure once 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock hits, things are pretty much going to change. So this is a live look from I-25 right near 104th Avenue, those south and northbound lanes. So I do want to switch things over to our main maps. For those heading out the door, a lot of green on your screen. No delays, no crashes to report. I-225 starting from Parker Road heading into I-25 this morning. That is going to be a 10 minute drive. And that commute, if you're heading out to the airport this morning, either east or westbound lanes of I-70, if you're dropping someone off at the airport, that is going to be a 13 minute drive right now. Uh, still looking pretty good. A lot of green, 67 miles per hour. Of course, if anything changes, throughout the morning. We'll keep you updated. Thanks so much for that, Brianna. The owners of the disgraced Return to Nature funeral home could be getting a federal plea deal. That is according to an email that was sent to family members of the victims. John and Carrie Halford are accused of improperly storing nearly 200 decomposing bodies in their former Penrose funeral home from 2019 to 2023. There is a plea deal on the table in that case, but this new potential plea deal is for a separate federal charge. The charges that the couple are facing. They're accused accused of pocketing nearly $900,000 in pandemic relief funds. The email says the U.S. Attorney's Office plans to lay out that plea deal next week. New this morning, crews down in Colorado Springs finished tearing the former Martin Drake power plant down. It was around a year of demolition work. Now it's just an empty lot. The power plant was shut down nearly two years ago in September of 2022. According to Colorado Springs Utilities, the decision to shut down the plant was made with several factors in mind. Those include the environment, the growing availability for renewable energy, and the high maintenance costs of running aging coal-fired plants, just to name a few. Right now, it's unclear on what the area will turn into. Colorado Springs Mayor Yemi Mobilade mentioned the uh, possibility of a housing development or even a green area there. If you mess up on the road, do not blame your significant other. One husband learned that one the very much hard way after he was pulled over in Douglas County. The sheriff's office says the man was stopped for driving with an expired license plate. When the deputy asked why he hadn't renewed it, the man said it was his wife's car and that she should have done it. Ooh. Safe to say, Ooh. deputy not impressed. My guess is wife may not have been either. Issued him a ticket instead of his wife. And that's how you get yourself in the doghouse. Mm, on yeah. all fronts. <laughs> at that point. <laughs> it is now 504 and last night Vice President Kamala Harris sat down for her first interview as the Democratic nominee for president. She was joined by her running mate Minnesota Governor Tim Walls for the CNN exclusive. When asked about policy shifts on key issues, Harris said her values have not changed. My value around what we need to do to secure our border. That value has not changed. I spent two terms as the Attorney General of California prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, violations of American laws regarding the passage, illegal passage of guns, drugs, and human beings across our border. My values have not changed. 
In the interview, Harris also said that she would name a Republican to serve in her cabinet if she is elected. The vice president also brushed off Donald Trump's questioning of her race. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump spent his Thursday at rallies in Michigan and Wisconsin. Now he is talking about IVF. I'm announcing today in a major statement that under the Trump administration, your government will pay for or your insurance company will be mandated to pay for all costs associated with IVF treatment, fertilization for women, <laughs> IVF treatment. Trump did not specify how the treatments would be paid for. He added, quote, we will also allow new parents to deduct major newborn expenses from their taxes. Earlier this year, Trump said that he supports women having access to IVF. That was following an Alabama Supreme Court ruling that declared frozen embryos as children. This could also put him at odds with anti-abortion rights advocates who are against certain parts of the IVF process as well. Trump is trying to move his hush money case to federal court as a way to delay his upcoming sentencing. In a petition filed Thursday, Trump's attorneys argued that he is entitled to a federal review in the wake of the Supreme Court's recent decision on presidential immunity. Trump's legal team also asks the federal court to confirm Trump cannot be sentenced while litigation over the removal is pending. Trump is scheduled to be sentenced on September 18th for his conviction on 34 counts of falsifying business records. Former Donald Trump advisor Steve Bannon is now asking a judge to release him from prison early. He is currently serving a four-month sentence for defying a congressional subpoena. Bannon was convicted of contempt of Congress for refusing to comply with a now-defunct House Select Committee that was investigating the January 6th Capitol attack. Bannon's attorneys say that if their new request for an early release is denied, they want the judge to reduce his sentence and then put him on supervised release. And one thing to know about the weather for today, it is our continued dry and warm weather that continues for today. It's going to last all this upcoming weekend. High of 87 for us in Denver today. A little bit of a cool start this morning that we are in the 50s right now. But again, 87, mostly sunny skies for today. This weekend, we'll have a little bit of an ebb and flow with those temperatures. I'll have details on that coming up in my full forecast in a couple of minutes. We'll want to send things over to Brianna for a look at traffic. And for those heading to the airport this morning, the A-line right now running smoothly. We're not seeing any delays at the moment. For those heading downtown to the tech center, both directions right now along I-25, it's going to be a 14-minute drive. And right now, we are headed into Labor Day weekend. Denver International Airport expecting to break travel records this holiday. We are talking more than 444,000 people predicted to go through TSA checkpoints now through Tuesday. That is a more than 5% increase compared to this time last year. 90s reporter Brianna Clark live from the airport this morning. And how are things looking so far? Well, good morning, guys. What well, we got here around... 445 this morning and it was a, mid, a little misleading. There were so many parking spots. We walked in. It was pretty quiet. It was a surprise that this was the uh, busiest travel day of the year so far. And then things started picking up about eight minutes ago around five o'clock and there has been a hustle and bustle now. So if you are coming to the airport this morning and you aren't sure which security to go through, well, right now they're lasting anywhere between five and 15 minutes. But look for the folks in the purple. They are actually guiding people to the terminals or rather the security. That's the quickest line. And right now that is West security. So keep that in mind, but that could also change throughout the day. I've also noticed it might be quick to get around an airport if you bring a scooter. Several folks have been on scooters this morning, just hustle in to their next spot. And if you are coming and driving yourself this morning, there is a portion of East Garage that will be shut down this weekend for cleaning. When we came in this morning, it actually said that all the garages were open, but the airport is telling us that East Garage is going to shut down a portion of that East Garage for that cleaning. As of right now, we saw spots available in other garages. We came in on level one west, tons of parking, like a good 20 spots or more of parking. You can also check the status of those on the airport's website along with the estimated wait times to go through TSA. Now, if you are planning to pick someone up from the airport, they've they've opened a new cell phone waiting lot this month. That makes it easy for you to get right on Pena Boulevard. So that cell phone waiting lot is on Gun Club Road. You can easily search that on Google Maps or just head to the airport's Facebook page. They give you perfect directions on how to get there. Reporting live at Denver International Airport, Brianna Clark, 9 News. Yeah, this is just the tip of the iceberg for that travel. We're going to see it really pick up there at the airport behind Brianna. All right, Brianna, thank you.
And if you're worried about your flight being canceled, your chances are a little bit better this time around. The Transportation Department revealed the rate of flight cancellations this year. Data shows that just 1.6% of flights have been canceled this year. That is lower than in 2022 and then below pre-pandemic levels. All of this coming during a very busy summer that saw the highest volume of air travel on record. The TSA says it screened nearly 240 million passengers since Memorial Day weekend. That works out to about 2.7 million a day.